Hey there, humans. My name is Nate Newman, and this is another episode of In Practice. Do you like kung fu movies? I love kung fu. So, if you've ever seen the It Man movies, then you're at least that familiar with the art of Wing Chun. Wing Chun is a southern Chinese style of kung fu that became popular as the primary martial art of Bruce Lee. My guest today is an instructor of Wing Chun, whom I was lucky enough to find as a teacher a few months ago. He studied martial arts before finding Wing Chun, and he's impressed me with his ridiculously high level of skill, his dedication, and his commitment to his students. Originally from New York, he studied under the renowned Sifu Alex Richter, who if you want to learn more about, and you really should want to learn more about him, listen to his Dudes of Kung Fu podcast. We sat down before the new year, and we actually just got back from an intensive weekend training in New York City, and I am sore from an absurd amount of physical activity, as well as getting my ass kicked a lot. This was a really cool interview to do, and it was a really good chance to learn more about my teacher. A lot of what we cover is how he approached learning this art, which is very subtle, as well as how he's taken the principles and values of this Kung Fu system to the rest of his life in opening a business and being a teacher. So please enjoy this very special episode of In Practice with Jose Reyes. Today, I can edit all those out or make them louder. <laughs> Either or. Yeah. All right. I'll let you get it going. Introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. My name is uh, Jose Reyes. Uh, I'm being interviewed today. Besides being interviewed today, <laughs> what do you do most other days? Most other days, I teach kung fu, uh, train kung fu, uh, Wing Chun kung fu in particular. Uh, I have a family of, including me, four. And yeah, that's about it. And I work on the side, hopefully not for long. Yeah, you trained in a bunch of other things before. Yeah, a few, Sean, right? a few other arts. I did. Uh, started out with uh, karate, quote unquote. You can't see my air quotes, but uh, I trained in karate, which was actually taekwondo. It was just marketed as karate as a started around like seven or six, seven or eight. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but uh, did that for a while, and then I started training capoeira which if you're not familiar, is a Brazilian martial art. Uh, it's pretty dancey. It's pretty acrobatic. It's pretty acrobatic. Uh, the one I started with is there's two styles of uh, capoeira. There's uh, Angola and Ejinal. Ejinal is the more uh, acrobatic style. And that actually was invented uh, because there was a few clubs that started after like uh Let's go into the history of uh, Capoeira first. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, uh, Capoeira was a Brazilian martial art. Uh, the slaves in Brazil weren't allowed to practice fighting uh, because of obvious reasons. A, they're slaves, and B, they might want to rebel because they're slaves. So they weren't allowed to practice fighting. So they created this uh, fighting system that was disguised as a dance. The original tra traditional style was uh, is what we call now Angola. It was not as uh, acrobatic. It had a few like acrobatic y kind of things in there, but my mesh ray, you see the, uh, the photo? Oh, yeah, there? you're uh, the Zhao Ganje or uh, Big Joe. So you've thrown up deuces with your old master? Yeah. He, he had a, a saying, or I don't know if he had a saying, but he told me this a couple times at least two limbs on the ground at all times, at least. Hmm. And the Angola style is uh, more usable as a, a martial art system, like as far as like combat. What makes it more useful for combat? A, you're, you stay on the ground. Yeah. You don't want to be flying through the air. If you're so it doesn't action. look as cool. It does, no, it doesn't look yeah. as cool. And um, that's actually the reason that um, the Asian Isle original style came mm -hmm. about is when they first started, broke away from like the slaves, the slaves were free or uh, black people were free in Brazil. They uh, were trying to promote the system and it just kind of looked kind of boring. And it looked too- uh, So they were taking it further. Take it to the stream so they could attract students. Um, actually, two of the uh, two original clubs before it was just like gangs. They would just play up with it. Like, like, yeah, 
terrorize people and stuff. Um, official original clubs, Big Joe and Little Joe. Yeah. Uh, Jao Grande, Jao Pequeno, Pequeno, Pequeno. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese, but uh, Big Joe moved to the States and Little Joe stayed in Brazil. They were like the first two original clubs. And I, I, I could be completely wrong in making this up, but I think that uh, Little Joe's club started like the Asian style, the, the more flippy style, which attracted more people to the art, but it kind of lost from the art. Kind of lost its uh, yeah. original intent. Yeah. Does look pretty cool. But its original intent lost itself, thankfully. As well, well, yeah. 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 So there's, there's something to be said for that as well. But I did both. I mostly did Angola, which is a more traditional, like mm -hmm. more fighty style than the Asian style, which is a more flippy style. How'd you find your, did you see a demo and... Oh, you talking about uh, for Capoeira? For, yeah, for Capoeira and Gerald. Yeah, uh, I didn't know like his backstory at all. I just I kind of fell into him as well as my current seafood, Alex. I kind of, I didn't know who he was and I didn't research him in particular. Did you just kind of reach a point in your life where more Capoeira wasn't needed? Um, no, I had gotten into an accident like uh, years before I started Capoeira. Oh. A uh, car accident. If, uh, I wasn't supposed to actually be doing any kind of martial arts or any like sports or physical activity, according to the ER doctor. Yeah. Like, oh, and look at you now. Bad. Yeah. I, he's an ER doctor. I mean, he does his job. He's probably really good at it, but he just sees you and makes an immediate assessment. Doesn't mm -hmm. really have any backstory on you or just this is what I see in front of you. This probably is better if you don't hurt yourself again. So yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. So while I was training Capoeira, uh, Another buddy of mine from uh, Honduras, mm -hmm. he was training in Brazil for a few years. So I was helping him with a demo and uh, we were at some park in Brooklyn. And during the demo, I like was doing, he does more of the flip style, the uh, Asian house style. So I was doing some like handstand kind of thing and my back gave out and I was just like, took a break from it. And then I- uh, How long was that break? Uh, it was until I found Wing Chun. So what was the, the timeline there? It was, uh, I guess, maybe about a few years, like three or four years. Wow. Uh, I took a break. I met my wife, had our first kid, and then uh, our, he must have just been born when I started training Wing Chun. Huh. Or just right before he was born. Yeah, I remember you told me that your wife bought you the lesson pack to start at City Wing Chun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she, uh, it's her... Her worst, best Christmas or birthday or whatever, whatever it was. What, whatever got you in there. Yeah. I, I remember asking you because we were doing some drills and I was thinking about well, how, how many repetitions do I have to get? Like, am I putting enough time? And it was like, and so I asked, you was like, Jose, how, how many weeks, how many days a week were you training? Oh, you, man. you just shot back like seven. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was, yeah. It's I, like, I'm not going to do that, but good for you. <laughs> um, yeah, what I, what is, I really just immediately fell in love with Wing Chun. Um, how how she even came to buy me that lesson is uh, the first Ip Man movie had just came out in China. So I had a copy. I already owned uh, the movie Wing Chun, Wing Chun with uh, Michelle Yao. Yao, Yao. When was, when did that come out? 2000, uh, 2009, 2008. Oh, so it was like fairly, fairly yeah. modern, yeah. Uh, Wing Chun or oh Ip Man? No, no, the Wing, Wing Chun, Chun movie. Yeah. Oh, that came out in the eighties, eighties. Oh, okay. Or ninety something. I can look it up though. Oh yeah, Ip Man. Anyway, we don't have. Uh, oh, I guess ninety four. So I, I had on that movie already. Uh, I was already into like kung fu flicks. Um, the the really 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 got me into martial arts. I guess I would say was uh, Ralph Ralph Macchio. Oh, Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what made me think that like I could. As a kid, I could mm -hmm. do that. And I never actually wanted to go to like a traditional karate school or anything. Yeah. I wanted to find my Mr. Miyagi who had me like take me in his backyard and have me wash his car in like some mystical way that I would learn how to Did fight you kind of find that with Sifu Alex? <laughs> no, I would, at that point I was way beyond that. Like, let's find some old ancient secrets. And I was like, I just want to learn some cool stuff. Uh, what's great about uh, my Sifu Alex is uh, a quick plug check out his podcast. It is Dudes of Kung Fu. Um, Super entertaining. Yeah, check yeah. that out if you get a chance to. A lot of good info. I was going to ask Jose for a background, a history of Wing Chun, but really you should yeah. just go to Dudes of Kung Fu. They will get more than into it. Um, yeah, and I 
have somewhat of a there's a few different histories there's a myth i think oh i think it's a myth at least and then there's the more uh accurate check out dudes and kung fu they'll have way more information on that where was, where was the question i lost my train of thought oh um we had brought up sifu alex you were past washing cars for mr miyagi oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so at that point i just want to learn a martial art and, and you'll see his school is very much i try to mimic that as best as i can but the school environment is very like family oriented and he is the biggest kung fu nerd you will ever and i mean that in the most endearing way he's all about that's what he is completely mm -hmm. about and he something about him he doesn't uh He's German and Cuban, so he doesn't have this uh, old Chinese, most old Chinese Kung Fu people. They're kind of like, I have these special... Yeah, you can't really sell yeah. it off ethnicity. Yeah, and they all have this, like, I know this secret thing. It was passed down to me. You yeah. wouldn't know about it. Yeah. yeah. And he'll, like, go further. So, another tangent, uh, as you know, I like doing those. Uh, my grandmother is from Cuba. Oh. And uh, she was an English teacher, so her English was, she spoke no slang whatsoever. It's completely proper English. Yes. So uh, I wasn't allowed to say yeah around her. Because it wasn't yes. Yes, correct. Or affirmative. Correct. So uh, that's how I feel almost about Alex is like, he's not Chinese. So uh, like he, he goes that extra step just to get it 100% correct because he doesn't have that, oh, I'm, this is just me i need he needs to go and get that and then he's not afraid to share all of it mm -hmm. he wants to share he wants to he's like a kid that just got a yeah, new he's, toy he he's effusive about it yeah. yeah 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 and speaking of the family vibe uh in kung fu schools we use the sifu sihing yeah. all these family terms in chinese and you are my sisuk yes so alex, alex is your sifu and i've heard a couple of times about the faux pas of calling somebody Who's not your Sifu, Sifu, as opposed to like Alex uh, Sifu. So what what am I gonna call him when I see him next you week? You will call him Sigong. Sigong, okay. Yes, that's like grandfather. Um so I'm like a bastard kung fu child. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> uh some people will get more hung up on that at, uh than not if if you call him Sifu. Mm -hmm. He's not going to, like, what? What? He's not going to get all bent out of shape. But, but, yeah, the correct title would be Si Gong. Mm. Uh, it's like grandfather. Um, your Si Fu would technically be Si Fu uh, Craig Savino, who was one of my, he's my Si Hing. He's one of my main instructors. He, he's actually the head instructor at City Wing Chun. He does, runs the day-to-day -day classes. Oh, okay. Uh, si Fu Alex uh, has stepped away from doing that. He teaches... Uh, instructors and uh private lessons that's it got it so getting back to you what was it about wing chun that just fully brought you down the rabbit hole um well hey i found it to be uh very practical very early as far as like martial art unlike karate i didn't or taekwondo i didn't feel like i could properly defend myself until i got to like a black belt and with Wing Chun, I just feel like I'm, I'm never going to get to the end of Wing Chun personally, but it's building on that proper foundation of being able to defend myself instead of chasing that. Not that I was ever in fear of like getting into fights every day, but you know. But just to walk around and know that you had something for yourself. It's, yeah, exactly. And but that brought you seven days a week. It just, oh, it man. just proved itself to you re really quickly. And yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I, honestly, I kind of, uh, one of my problems with uh, a lot of stuff, stuff that I take on is I don't want to sound like braggadocious or anything, but um, usually I'm naturally can pick things up really quickly and it's similar to Wing Chun, but that can be a detriment because I won't necessarily put in the hours because I'm like, oh, I got this already. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, and then you would coast on that. It doesn't sound like you were doing that with no, Wing no. Chun. No, uh, I've, I've definitely had spells where I've like, uh, I've taken quote unquote breaks, not breaks as I did with like Capoeira. Where it's like time off, but uh, less consistent. Yeah, like I'll, I'll just kind of like as of a, a way of duty, just like get my forms in and not really do much else training. Yeah, and just like and that's and, not stopping the car. That's just pulling the foot off the pedal yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just uh, uh, actually uh, going to New York. Actually, every time I go there, it just kind of inspires me to like uh, just go harder, I guess. Uh, but 
right now I'm at a point where I don't necessarily have, uh, I, I use you guys for training partners. Uh, I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, get, I get beat up by you a lot. <laughs> So uh, I, I was going to ask, though, um, how much of your practice is private, just you, and how much of it is well, like ninety percent of it, really? Yeah, and then ten percent is yeah using us as using <laughs> human using dummies. Guys. Yeah, and uh, actually, just it, it, it's being a, a full time instructor and not necessarily a, a tr- like I'm not with my training partners and and my sifu and, and my seeings. Working with you guys, which I'm also teaching. Yeah. So I'm teaching you to train with me. It's, uh, I, I'm figuring different things out that is helping me make my Wing Chun mine, which is at the end, of, that's the end goal is to absorb it and like have your own expression of the art. And so with anything, like to be a good at anything, to be like Miles Davis is, that's Miles Davis. It's not, yeah, you, he you, had a you hear his identity. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's his expression. Yeah. But it uh, kind of sounds like uh, I just read the Bruce Lee, A Life, The Map. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 I haven't actually read that yet. I heard it. Uh, oh, you would really Sifu, like it. My Sifu talks about it. He, I, think he, uh, I think he does an episode where he interviews the author of that. Really? Yeah, I believe so. I am going to check that out. Yeah. But they covered the time that Bruce Lee spent in Seattle. Yeah. And he had gotten a little bit of a Wing Chun training in Hong Kong for a yeah. few years before he left. And then he came to America, and there was some Wing Chun. There was some Kung Fu yeah. in the Bay Area, and all, probably almost none in Seattle. Yeah. But he just started taking on students, and he was just kind of using them yeah. as like figuring his, it out. Yeah, yeah as uh, his training partners, he was teaching them enough so that he could get yeah. better. And uh, I was wondering, like, how much taking on teaching was uh, something like that for you when you came to Columbus? Uh, I mean, I had already like uh, expressed to my Sifu in New York uh, that I wanted to teach. We we're planning. I was planning to open a school in Brooklyn. And then we found out we were pregnant, and he had actually just offered me a job. Not you and school. not you and Alex, you and your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me and Alex didn't get pregnant. Uh, me and my wife got pregnant, or my technically my wife got pregnant. Then I had to turn down his job and move away and abandon my sifu. Oh, the ain't the tears. The prodigal son will return one day. Uh, but yeah, so we came out here, and I had already had that in my mind, and then. Now I have a brick and mortar school, um, but when I first came here, uh, I was just renting any space I could find, and I would go to class. And most days, it would just be myself, just only myself, just uh, doing my forms, and yeah, that was about it. Doing very basic drills because I had the luxury in New York of always having a training partner, oh, like no matter what, uh, even if I didn't have a training partner. The city uh, itself was, I could use that as a training partner. And when I came out here, I didn't have, like, I tried to figure out different things I could do, but it's, well, a lot more spread out. Wing Chun is definitely a, a urban, or at least the style Wing Chun that we practice. So Yeah, for Hong Kong alleys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong rooftops. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't resemble Columbus, Ohio too much. No, nah, nah, not really. Uh, the capital city, yeah. My Sifu always gives me uh, shit about that. Uh, are you trying to make your uh, PG? No, I don't care. Okay. Uh, I would have to delete every other word from my own <laughs> dialogue. So, uh, No, he uh, he always gives me shit about abandoning him and moving to the great city of Columbus. He, he has, he, he says, I have this uh, organization and we call it City Wing Chun, yet all my students abandon me and move to places that aren't cities. <laughs> so... Uh, Columbus, Ohio, the uncity. Uh, but I had already had the idea to teach. I, I kind of wish I would have had a little more teaching under my seafood, under my belt, but it is what it is, and you have to adapt. And that's part of actually Wing Chun is being able to adapt to your environment, your situation. And uh, you guys can't see it uh, in radio world, podcast world. On my board right now, I have uh, the principles of force written up, and there's three, four, there's three, abandon unload and borrow so those are kind of ways i try to like live my life like what pressure life has given me if i'm gonna stick if i'm gonna borrow that force i'm gonna abandon my intent and that fight isn't necessarily worth it it's kind of just like i'm just fighting i'm just being a bull put my head down i have to sometimes step back and think oh 
I want to put all this effort into something that's not really going to have a payout. It's just going to cause me more. That's kind of what brought me to Columbus. I was like, well, I can fight my wife and not moving to Columbus or I can just. And your wife is from Columbus. Yeah, she's from Columbus. So she had an intent to move. And I got you. It is a lot easier to do a lot of things in Columbus oh, yeah, compared definitely. to New York, especially yeah. raise a family. Yeah, that's one. Uh, to open a, a school and afford to pay rent, and well, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, I always had that intent to open a school. Well, not always, but yeah, pretty early on, I was able to uh, teach uh, prep classes in, in the New York school. So what did the transition to this look like? Because you've been in... Columbus, Columbus for about three, three years now. Three and some change, yeah. Yeah. To to I'm sorry, what to, to uh well, brick and mortar this school, yeah. yeah, this studio. Well, at first when I first before I even moved here, my wife had moved here already. I had come to visit, she was pregnant. Um she moved here like pretty early on in her pregnancy. I stayed in New York uh for a few months. Uh, her mother introduced me to this guy who does Tai Chi out here, and he introduced me to his master, Dr. Huang. His son used to run his school and his son passed away the year before. So he wanted somebody to help the Chinese martial arts cultural center or something like that. Um, Chinese martial arts, CMAC was the name of the acronym or whatever. Okay. So he kind of wanted someone to like take on his son roles as, as running the whole organization. Obviously, I'm not going to teach Tai Chi. I could probably like have people follow me in a Tai Chi form and probably have them do it wrong. That I know very little about tai chi, tai chi, but he just wanted someone that was into the martial art, to Chinese martial art in particular, to like run the organization. He had this huge building in Grandview, but it was he sh- when I when I moved here, he showed me one room, or before I moved here rather, when I just came to visit, he showed me one room. The room was nice, ish, and uh, then he like had me do some like push hands with his students. He was kind of trying to see if I was. I, I assume he was trying to see if I was like a legit martial, martial art artist. practitioner or something. Yeah, if you asked me to do push hands with somebody, I would not yeah, look would, like I would, would know what to do with my hands. You would fare all, all right. Uh, well, obviously, uh, we're doing something that I don't train. I don't train push hands. Yeah. Well, I have since, but at the time, I had not trained push hands at all. I didn't even know push hands was a thing. I just thought Tai Chi was some old dude that I would follow in the park and uh, yeah. do what he did from like 10 feet away. Uh, but then I, that was the first time I ever did push hands. And I just basically used my Wing Chun. Sticking hands. Yeah. That, it's, that, uh, it's my, that's that's another exercise that's yeah. pretty similar to that. It's, it's similar-ish. Um, but not only that, I would just use a lot of the, the stance and the footwork to move myself around. and uh, That's sort of out of odds with tai chi though isn't it they always talk about having really solid yeah stance. oh yeah definitely definitely so they they, they weren't um expecting some of the stuff i was doing because i would they would push at me and i would just let them push which kind of seems like that would be tai chi because they're like flow and get yeah, something's coming at you you want to let it flow to try to but they I, sort of make a virtue out of yeah. not moving yeah so yeah. i don't know I, as uh every once in a while i'll do some push hands it's, it's not really my thing but i'll do some stuff. I, the the group that I do meet up with out here every once in a while, they're uh, from different art. Uh, one of them, Swai Shao, Sifu. Uh, one of them does like Aikijitsu or some Japanese art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he works for Honda, so he actually learned it in Japan. Uh, and other guy, other guy does, I forgot what else. And like, I think there's only one guy, the guy that started the club that actually is the true or chi, Tai Chi practitioner, but I digress. So you were working with them. He showed you that room. Yeah. Did you end up teaching there? I ended up teaching there for a little while. And that was the space that I kind of just like, I would just show up and no one would come. It's kind of like my yoga classes. Here. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just kept at it. I just kept hacking away. I had a class that I like, think I had two classes in the evening and then two classes early, early. And that was... Uh, my daughter was a uh, newborn at the time, so I was really trying to work around, like, helping out my wife <laughs> with the kids. So my schedule was kind of wonky. A, I had, like, a 5.30 in the morning class and a 5.30 in the evening class. And I was like, I got, like, a couple of people that come to the morning or the evening classes. No one really came to the morning classes. Sometimes I'll get my brother-in-law to come out of just, like, uh, <laughs> he would just come just because, ah, God, fine, whatever, I'll help you out. <laughs> come to your class. 
So nice of him. Yeah. No, no I, he, he was, he's great. He still is great, but. Uh, no, no, my, my friends, my friends are the same way. Yeah. I have to ha- heckle them to <laughs> do just about any practice yeah. with me or come to a class. Um, well, yeah. I think that's just how people are. Yeah. They don't like to move. Yeah. So you were at Dr. Wong's for a little while. And um, then, then uh, I, for the first place I rented. Oh, I rented this uh, dance studio space. It was like the, or a commune space uh, in Clintonville. Clintonville is a neighborhood in Columbus here. That is where I live. That wasn't really getting any traction. And, and uh, I had to pick, I, they didn't give me a key, so I had to pick up the key every time I had a class from one of the, the co-op people or whatever. It's not really a family vibe. No. Not really. I think you gave me a key within like. Give me a, I think you gave me a key within like two weeks of me yeah. joining. And then yeah, it was just like sometimes she would forget. And my payment was really weird. I just had to like leave it on her porch, in some like drawer sometimes. And then she was like said I didn't pay her or something. And I was like, yeah, just check in here. But anyway, and then somebody found out the system, possibly, or maybe she just forgot, or somebody else in her family grabbed it, or whatever. Uh, but it wasn't like I give her money, she gives me a receipt. It was just I just leave money in her on her porch. Essentially, it was weird. It's not airtight. No, no. Uh, so, so there was that space. Did you go straight from there to here? No, or no. Were you bouncing I, around for a little. I bit? was bouncing around. I was teaching uh, out of uh, different gyms. I would teach just like one-off classes, workshops, mm-hmm. try to get, gain some traction. Um, at one point, I was renting another spot in Clintonville. There, uh, that was a co-op. They gave me a key. That was a legit yoga studio. Uh, the only problem there is that they would double book me with other classes. Oh, with other classes, yeah. and forget to tell me until we're so there'd both... be like a yin yoga class going on at the yeah, same like, time uh, that you're like doing self defense stuff. Like what? Yeah. So, so that that got to be a hassle. But before then, I was like bouncing around at different gyms, teaching workshops, and then I started teaching at uh, OSU has this space in uh, familiar with four hundred West Rich. Uh, like some no, I'm familiar space. with the uh, RPAC. Okay, it's it's not on campus. It's in Franklinton. Oh, okay. So 400 West Rich is this this artist space. OSU has this beautiful space. It's called the Steam Factory. Mm-hmm. They actually let me use that for free for a while, until they had to like write their Steam Factory is a, a collective of all the different departments mm-hmm. and faculty and students come together and create new ideas. Very push cool. out, yeah, it's a cool concept, cool idea. One of my uh, students who hasn't been training for a while is one of the founding members of, of the Steam Factory. So they were let me use the space for free, but just one day a week. And then the rest of the week, I was running out of that yoga studio. And then uh, Steam Factory, they had to like put in their budget or whatever, and they had to like attest for all the time the space was being used. And I wasn't a legit, I don't know, I wasn't part, I'm not, I don't go to OSU, I'm not faculty at OSU. So they were like, they were really cool about like not letting letting me go, but it was just like uh, I wasn't official enough. Got it for the administration at OSU. They were like, yeah, once they had to start cutting. Yeah, yeah, they were like, this space has to be used for OSU stuff. I offered to uh, teach OSU students for free if they would come. I was like, <laughs> they're like, ah, no, just let me beat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then uh, I was running that space, and then I started teaching when. Uh, still running the space half of the week and teaching at the uh, steam factory the other half. And then uh, once the steam factory let me go, I started teaching at Seventh Sun Brewing in the back room mm-hmm. on Mondays. So I had a Monday and that's class. where you uh, you bartend. Yeah, yeah. Bartend I'm, there. Uh, yeah. Hopefully not for long, but yeah. Part-time. Is that where you met Other John? No. Uh, uh, they both found me on the interweb. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because uh, it seems like he's been at it for a they, while. Yeah. And- oh, other John was training with me through Steam Factory. Through he's been with training with me for quite a while. He wasn't okay. at the CMAC. He yeah. wasn't at that place. But, but all this time you were building a following. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, just kept pushing and just hacking away. And and that's another thing. I could have like fought and tried to stay at that yoga studio. I'm like, no, I uh, like, you need to stop. And I was like, that's not worth it. So abandoned force. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was looking for spaces and oddly enough, landlords don't want uh, people teaching people how to fight in their, their space, their buildings. So <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. They don't want people fighting in their buildings purposely. Uh, if they saw the people, yeah, if they saw me coming, they were like, this guy's not going to do anything to the drywall, whatever. <laughs> 
Uh, but no, this place was uh, a piece of shit when I came in here. Me and uh, my buddy actually like we laid down the floors, and I kind of took a pause. And it would look like shit when I for like actual shit. It's kind of a nice like room feces. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of a nice room now. Yeah, kind of, still only kind of. <laughs> uh, no, it's definitely come a long way since how it was. Uh, if you see my quote unquote office space, mm. or even the second room. Uh, that's I just need to paint there and do the floors in there. But if you look at my office, that's what the whole space looked like. Wow. Yeah, which is I'll describe for folks of the internet. Uh, everything's on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Fire ex- fire extinguisher. No, no, you have to see my office. You have to go to my office. Oh, there's yeah, more back there's there. There's more yeah, my office, quote unquote office. This is stuff that I've been pulling out of my office to like try to get it to find it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So. This is not the bad part. <laughs> this is no, but this is not the worst place I've ever trained. There are definitely boxing gyms that are uh, grotier than this. Yeah, uh, and uh, I try to at least keep it tidy as far as like making sure the floors are always mopped. And hey, I think like the first three or four times I met you, mm-hmm. I was mopping as you walked in. Yeah, and one of my Sifu's uh, good friends uh, is a jujitsu player. He has a jujitsu school in Jersey. Um, his name is Tom DeBlast. He fought in Bellator. Uh, oh, whoa. He, yeah, he's That's a legit time. dude. And he's the coolest dude, uh, or one of the coolest dudes I've ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got to do a seminar with him. This was back in uh, Hurricane Sandy days. And uh, he came to Sitting with Chun and did a workshop. And all the proceeds went to uh, people who had lost property and stuff due to Hurricane Sandy. But it was also a great opportunity for me. I got to train with this dude, and he's like, super badass and super cool uh, so one of the things uh i follow him on instagram is tom the blast um, and he always has these things like uh and it sometimes it puts me in check but he's here to train his students he, his students aren't here for him to like prosper he that's his job is to train his students and to train them at the best of his ability so i'll have pictures of him like mopping the floor like yeah. this is so yeah he's a he's a good inspiration a uh, great inspiration for me Life of service. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's super legit. You should check him out at Tom de Blas. Ocean, uh, Ocean County Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, the website is, that's it, oceancountybjj.com. Uh, check him out. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to play around with more Jiu Jitsu and yeah. wrestling stuff. My brother was a big time wrestler in high school. So every time, we're at home, I make him do Wing Chun drills with me, and then he'll show me some wrestling stuff. Cool, yeah. Yeah, no, it's all really fun. Yeah. Uh, before I opened this studio, I had a lot more free time, so I would train with, like, some uh, jujitsu guys, uh, Muay Thai guys, and, like, just train some different stuff. Uh, typically, I wouldn't have them train Wing Chun stuff. I would just train what they're training. And uh, uh, I, I know very little jujitsu. Uh, most of the stuff I know is very basic, and I'm not that great at it. But what I found out with same thing with Tai Chi, same thing with Jiu Jitsu is that Wing Chun translates. Uh, Wing Chun was designed to fight other martial arts. So it wasn't designed. Excuse me. You go to a Jiu Jitsu tournament, you're fighting other Jiu Jitsu players. You're playing by Jiu Jitsu rules. You go to a karate tournament, uh, Taekwondo, boxing. Um, the only one now that's like uh, is MMA. Currently, I feel like most there's some 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 awesome dudes out there that do other different kinds of uh, systems, but mostly, if you go to your average MMA gym, it's mostly going to be BJJ mixed with Muay Thai. True that, yeah. That's the majority. A little bit of judo, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of judo, and and that's I feel like the judo is the transition world between their uh, Muay Thai and yeah. How do you how do you throw somebody down to start? BJJ in them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give them a BJJ. Give them a yeah. BJJ. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually done a few workshops with them. They're a Columbus State uh, self defense team or something. I'll Not check it out. Yeah. And I'll try to get back to it, but you did take a bunch of classes at C State. Columbus, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not well, a bunch. I took a few. Okay. I took like, uh, you took the useful ones, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah, getting back to the, you said 90% of your training is just you? Yeah. Um, okay, well, I know how early you wake up because you're kids. <laughs> and then there's a morning class twice a week and you're teaching evening classes here yeah. and working a part-time gig. 
um, at least when, one. It, when? Yeah. <laughs> Is that your question? So like when, yeah. Uh, who, uh, whenever. Um, sometimes I'll be training in front of the TV and my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm trying to watch TV. Uh, just when I can fit it in. Uh, I'll come in here. Sometimes I'll come in here like an hour before class. And and my kids, uh, my daughter, not so much. You met my daughter. Have you met my son yet at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple of times. Uh, I'm sure you've seen my daughter quite a bit more. Well, she's younger, and yeah, so, so she she's has less, less occupied. Activities. Yeah. yeah. But uh, my son has enough activities where he's doing stuff. This is his slow time right now, so he's on winter break at school. But he's doing stuff most of the time where it's like he's off playing soccer or doing whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll train with my daughter. But I feel like my daughter is going to be the one that takes up martial art versus my son. He's, she's, uh, I think she, she naturally has found BJJ. I think she's really a, a jujitsu player. Uh, she'll like That's put, awesome. Put my son in these, like, uh, just naturally. I never showed her any of this stuff. I don't teach Brazilian jujitsu by any means. Uh, but she'll like put my son in these chokeholds. Like, oh, that looks like some shit I learned <laughs> <laughs> at a jujitsu class. Uh, but she's gonna be the martial artist. Uh, my son loves soccer, so that's what yeah. he's about. You've shown me some videos. He uh, is yeah, like not even just for it. his age. He looks like he's gonna take it somewhere. He's all about it. Too bad um, both of his parents are short. <laughs> Whatever. Better, we'll better way. short and coordinated yeah. than what I am. <laughs> so, well, it's a lot of training on your own. It's good that you get to train with us because martial arts of almost anything, you yeah. need to do it with other people to be good at it. But um. On the board, you see the bottom right corner? Yeah. As I was training some uh, some chi sao drills. Chi sao is a uh, uh, thing that we do. It's a training exercise. It's called like sticking hands or clinging arms. But it's you're supposed to. That's one of the main things I have problems training, period. But uh, those are all solo drills, but it doesn't seem to make sense because at chi sao, you're supposed to be reacting yeah, exactly. to your opponent. But I, I even train my chi sao in the air by myself. So it's like so uh, it's like shadow chi sao. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which I would prefer to have a training partner, but I yeah. You, you do what you can. can. Exactly. It's it's awesome. Also, when I go to New York, since uh, a lot of the people that I that were training under me, uh, as far as like I was teaching them their prep classes and like I just to watch them like progress and like become badass martial artists and. Um, obviously, I don't have any hand in that anymore, or not as much of a hand because I only see them a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. But a, a lot of these dudes are like passing me. You know, dudes and ladies are like passing my a level of, I guess not some of them skill, but a lot of at least just their progression in the art form itself, mm -hmm. which is awesome to see them like see people like take it serious and take it to heart, and not just like some people like uh, I have students. Uh, that this is just a side hobby is like, or something yeah. to like keep them busy. Some people, uh, I feel like you're one of the students that are taking it more as like a journey. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I hate dropping cliches, but you got out what you put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but like some, that's great for some people. They just want a, another thing to do. So yeah, I'm not, it's, it's not a bad thing to put yeah. in anybody's life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, but it's also awesome to see people that are just like, yeah, fuck yeah, it's, yeah, Go fuck yeah, Kung Fu. Yeah, fuck yeah. It's going to be my next studio. Be like, oh, fuck yeah, Kung Fu. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start dropping those hashtags for the <laughs> yoga class promotions. <laughs> fuck yeah, Kung Fu. Hashtag <laughs> Columbus Kung Fu. Hashtag fuck yeah, Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's legit. Oh, I was I was going to keep asking about your training. Oh, my training? Yeah, so I do, do like a lot of uh, like physical training. Uh, try to... And honestly, I've been probably slacking over this holiday season since like haven't uh, we all? <laughs> probably since uh, Thanksgiving or since maybe the beginning of November. I had like uh, I had some stuff, personal stuff at his art funeral, and which was a bummer. But uh, I didn't train as much yeah. as I'd like to. It was it, well. It was also really cool that a lot of the students took up the slack. Yeah, a lot of us have keys and opened up and still trained together. Yeah, that's all, always awesome to like know that people are still training whether it be correct or not <laughs> but don't worry least, it wasn't <laughs> uh we need you 
Uh, no, it's awesome to see people like actually like want to be here and not. So one of, one of the ideas I had, uh, obviously I want people to nerd out on Kung Fu and want them to be kung, great Kung Fu nerds and blah, blah, blah. But I know everyone's not going to be that. So one of the things that I wanted to uh, promote as far as this is uh, alternative fitness, not alternative fitness is like you're going to get some alternative results or like, but just a different way to look at like movement and being healthy and like not being sedentary, sedentary, sedentary. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are reexamining what fit is yeah. um, with the whole functional fitness thing that's been happening the last couple of years. Yeah. 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 Uh, I feel like CrossFit is on its way out. Thank God. The fad, at least, of it. Well, I'm not going to take away any of the good that CrossFit did because oh, yeah, it yeah. really got a lot of people involved who probably wouldn't Would have not been be, yeah. and yeah. got people to experiment with a lot of different things. Definitely. Um, can't say that I'm a fan personally, yeah. but... No, I definitely know some people that have like probably would never like picked up a barbell or mm -hmm. that are like, yeah, I could do a thousand whatever kips. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Uh, in five seconds. Okay, great. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, and I, I like how open minded you've been to everything because I never thought about combining the yoga with martial arts until you invited me to start teaching here a little bit. Yeah. And trying to, and you were bringing up, well, let's try to throw some dynamic movement in there, start working on isolating because everybody's really in tune with their body. So, like, thinking about particular joints and what can be moved, what can be left stationary while you move something else. Yeah. And it, it, it's a lot broader than just Kung Fu that I thought I was walking into. Well, uh, you know, it, uh, Kung Fu the, the, is synonymous with martial arts. Yeah. But Kung Fu itself, the, the term Kung Fu is uh, just something that you try. It's uh, achievement through hard work, achievement through dedication. So it's just something that you've put that time in and, and like become good at uh, or be, and, and keep becoming better like I feel like uh, for me at least my kung fu doesn't have an end there's no like I'm gonna reach this pinnacle and then that's it and then all right, you can I take guess, a bunch of yeah. pictures on Instagram and say I'm done yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean I, I can get accolades and get like uh, certificates and do all that but I just feel like the actual kung fu itself is Another cliche is it is the journey. It's not the yeah. The that, that's sort of what this whole show is about. What it, is people practicing? Oh yeah, and, yeah. The, you know, it's, the, it's not the fu. end goal. Yeah, yeah they're kung it's, fu. It's, yeah, I, I guess I could also just call this show kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. No, definitely. That's what it, it amounts to. Is we can find a a Wikipedia definition. Maybe I might not have an actual definition, but let's see, kung fu. Um, Kung Fu is a TV show, I guess. This yeah, team. with uh, David, <laughs> David Carradine. David Carradine, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're not going to have a legit definition. But I, I, honestly, I think that uh, Bruce Lee was the one that uh, made the term Kung Fu. I didn't know, notice any of his stuff back in the day. It was G-O-N-G. -G. That's how his opinion was. Gung. Kung yeah. Fu. He's the one that really made it synonymous with uh, martial arts, as far as I know. I could be wrong on that. Martial art is a kung fu. And I think, actually, uh, my seafood, they talk about that on the uh, Do the Kung Fu podcast. Uh, like, different terminologies of, like, kung fu and, and Wing Chun in particular and Jeet Kune Do and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's all you can really... Uh take to pretty much any endeavor is just yeah. keep working just at do it. it yeah yeah keep going um or not you could yeah did your so did your practicing change much once you were training on your own oh yeah definitely um i uh, i got uh, were you were you extrapolating on the things that you were doing back at city wing chun with your sea hangs and stuff no i honestly when i first moved out here i got really uh kung fu depressed mm. i was like I was really bummed out and I was just, I kind of just did it because I was, I, I was just like, I, I know I want to do this. This is what I want to do. But I was honestly like really depressed about like not being able to uh, train with my seeings and, and my, and also my si dai, my, my younger, like just my whole Kung Fu family, my Sifu. So yeah, I was pretty depressed about like not having anyone to train with. 
uh, actually my son one day I went to a class and no one showed up so I was like fine we'll leave and he was like well you're here already he's like he was like four or five years old at the time he's like well you're here so why don't you just train by yourself and I was like oh yeah duh damn but, <laughs> why don't like why am I not just training by myself I think I, I just moving here was a shock to me first of all just moving to Columbus uh, mm. was kind of a shock uh, I didn't come out here with a job that I was coming to. Uh, I didn't know the city. I've I had come here to visit before on like uh, holidays, like Christmas, and but I don't know if you've just gone somewhere for like a holiday. It's like you don't you only know unless you go there the by yourself. Immediate area, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I didn't know how to get anywhere even to that extent. I was just being chauffeured around all the place by like my in laws and stuff. So it was like I just knew a few places that they went to. I didn't know, I, I didn't know the city for my own. So when I moved out here, I was uh, a little, I was depressed in a few different uh, ways, I guess, just being somewhere like that's foreign that I didn't necessarily want to move to Columbus. I yeah. fought it at first. I didn't necessarily, was like, yeah, let's go to Columbus. Now that I'm here, it's, I love it, it's great. But at, before I moved here, I was like, oh, really? Col Columbus, where, Idaho? Uh, so, uh, we don't, yeah, was, we don't suck that bad. No, yeah. no, it's actually it's actually a pretty nice uh, place. I do miss New York, but it's uh, definitely easier to raise children here. Yeah, I love New York too, and I probably visit at least once or twice a year. Yeah. But I can never live there. Man. Oh yeah, it's, I love living there. I love the I love the busy. Yeah, yeah, I I do appreciate it here. Yeah, yeah. Excuse but me. when you moved out here, you were your practice turned into. This sort of solitary thing. Yeah, that's when it became solo. And I was like, it's depressing. It was depressing for me, at least at first. And then I just... Uh, Did it become much more about repetition? Yeah, with yeah definitely. Um, and and it's, it's a lot harder to keep that training up for me, at least. It's a lot harder to stay consistent and, and train by myself. I have to sometimes, like I said earlier, I have to just like... You kind of have to trust the process when yeah. you're just doing things like that, like throwing a kick a bunch of times because... Yeah. It's more gratifying when you're working with somebody, you can see it working yeah. a little bit better over time. <laughs> yep. But if you're just doing it over and over again as a drill, then you have to just trust the process yeah, that definitely. it's getting better. And uh, yeah, just the feedback and just the camaraderie you get with just training with uh, other people. Like, you know, we've trained with John and yeah. Jimmy. It's just like, it's just a different thing. It, yeah, it's one of the good things about coming here to train is, yeah. you know, the people that are always coming. And sometimes, even like in, when I was in New York, I wouldn't necessarily want to train kung fu, but I would want to be around like my seeings. And if that day I was like, ah, oh, I really feel like going to kung fu today. Yeah. At least I knew I could. It gets train. you to gets you to keep coming. Yeah, I could be with. Uh, so what did you find to be your motivation once? Well, it that was, wasn't what you had in Columbus. It was literally that that thing that my son said. He was like, yeah, why don't you? Why don't you? Like, yeah, why don't I? Why, why would I not like, there's literally nothing stopping me from training by myself. It's just me. It was the only thing that's stopping me. So I was like, did you never relate to it that way? It was always something that you were doing with other people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It was like, there's certain things I would do by myself, like uh wall bags and like, but I never like thought about training and, and it's, it's a sickness in all uh, Wing Chun schools. And once you get to, to this level, it's like, the chi sao sickness and I yeah as well and it's not full on you, sparring yeah it's, you now gotta, it's like that's all people want to do it's fun it's really fun chi yeah. sao is fun the fun the training exercise but then people that's playing all with fun. other people yeah, yeah. so uh I, I fell into that and that was like oh man i can't do chi sao anymore so what's the point <laughs> but uh there's, we got a we got a wooden dummy yeah, yeah yeah well i didn't have a wooden dummy i got oh yeah those things are expensive yeah i didn't have a wooden dummy at the time uh, at the school that uh, the CMAX school, one of the uh, Tai Chi guys had built a PVC dummy. <laughs> it was not great. Wow! <laughs> but I could at least like train some things on there, and then I would. That's why. I, that's basically why I started training with uh, other arts with Wing Chun. Yeah. So before, when I would do the different <coughs> arts, I would train uh, Taekwondo. That's all I would train. Yeah. I would train Capoeira. That's all I would train. A little Jiu Jitsu that I did. I would just. Only train jujitsu. Now that uh, Wing Chun has showed me that, they're not showing me. It's uh, it's an art that you can use the principles 
of Wing Chun to roll Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Not the same techniques per se, but you can use the principles. We um, can borrow their force. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Same thing with like uh, Tai Chi, push hands. I'm not going to do it how they do it because uh, now, now if, if somebody can, as far as like Tai Chi goes, somebody is like, oh, this is, we do it this way and not how you do it. And it makes sense. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But there's, there's always an argument for yeah. why you do anything the yeah. way that we have in, in Chun. Honestly, the progression that I've I found so far is like you have these definite rules and we do it. You do it exactly. You don't snowflake it. My Steve always calls us all snowflakes because we all do stuff our own special little way. <laughs> <laughs> but you do it this particular way. And and the more you understand the the reason why you're doing it this particular way and, and can absorb why you're doing it this particular way, the more you can, I wouldn't say abandon that particular way, but the more you can contextualize it yeah, and know why you're using exactly. it when. Exactly. And and it can be more your own versus just, and that takes a while to get to that point. Like if you, uh, when we go to New York, you get the chance to see my seafood do some cheese out with someone versus like me do cheese out with someone. I'm trying my best to follow the rules. Yeah. He's absorbed the concepts and just, it's a completely different thing to watch him than to watch me. But seriously, people who are great at that stuff look like superheroes to me. It, it just looked like martial arts when I've seen it online and stuff yeah. like that. And then I tried to start doing it and I realized exactly how difficult it is. <laughs> yeah. Which, and that was, uh, even Wing Chun, I, I picked up Wing Chun. Uh, not that I became great at it. Mm. Uh, obviously, I put a lot of time. I put, like, I was training. Um, I probably just blindly said seven days a week, but I was probably training, like, up to up to six days a week. Four to six days a week. Uh <laughs> Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> uh, I would try to go to at least two classes a day. <laughs> at least. Jeez. Um, was a lot of that because you saw yourself getting better? Um, I, that original drive was uh, maybe that. So the, the very basics, like we, uh, you know, we do like the wedge, which is very basic stuff, but it's very practical. Mm -hmm. Learn some footwork. But, uh, the, the deeper we get into it, the more I'll like harp on you for having your footwork correct. Yeah. I, I nudge at it now. It's like, hey, make weight back. But the deeper you get into it, the more you want to be not snowflaking. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, you're you're asking me what the fuck Nate standard yeah. is. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it's, it's funny because you start, you come in here as a snowflake because otherwise, why would you come here? You already, if you know everything already, there's no. Yeah. Uh, as yeah, far as I, I, I feel like a lot of what I've been doing here is unlearning things that I learned yeah, in other definitely. martial arts. So it, it made sense to me, like uh, intellectually, but like I trained a bunch of other martial arts, so I had to unlearn stuff, and I was like, just really, I don't know, why I was so determined for. It's just it was so gr like the environment there was so great and just awesome place, and uh, Wing Chun made practical sense to me. I had a buddy that had tried to get me into Wing Chun years before that. When I was training in Capoeira, and I was like, oh, why would I, why are you doing this badass martial art? Why would I do that? Whatever. He wasn't that great at Wing Chun. Um, so. It's, okay. Um, I was, I was going to make a statement, but I actually want to ask a question. Yeah. Do you think it's hard to be great at Wing Chun or is it pretty strong? No, uh, 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 I mean, he wasn't that good. Okay. <laughs> but uh, it's, no, it's not. You just put the time great. in? Yeah, it's, all it is is just do your Kung Fu. Yeah. And do your practice to become better at something, which is your kung fu. How rare is that? Um, it's not uh, in, in martial arts. Maybe it's rare. Yeah. Um, but in the world, it's not rare. Um, people are always doing great things with the training hard to do mm -hmm. something. If you're an IT guy, you like know ins and outs of computers, then you just yeah. Yeah, my last interview was uh, with my friend Chris, who's a software engineer. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's, exactly and he just brute yeah. forces it yeah. some Saturdays he sits down for eight hours and just codes yeah. some people are like play video games a thousand hours a day and they yeah. become great at video that's games that's true that's their kung fu yeah uh, I don't necessarily see the benefit to society in that but I mean hey that's their kung fu so yeah it, and as the sense of kung fu as, as the term itself it's not rare yeah. To have people that train hard and good, like a uh, Uber driver that knows the whole city and like has a city on, and knows where to stop and like what neighborhood to be in at what time. Mm -hmm. That's their Kung Fu. They figured that out. They figured out the system. 
Okay. It's just it's basically just hacking a system and keep hacking like not hack like chop but hack like infiltrate and just keep keep plugging away. Yeah, really. Exactly. So yeah. kung fu and kung fu. Yeah, <laughs> kung fu and kung fu uh, might be a little more rare, but even so, it's uh, in this uh, town of Columbus. I met some great kung fu practitioners, hmm. not necessarily Wing Chun. But Kung Fu, uh, some great Swai Chao practice, Hungar, Tai Chi. Really cool. Yeah. Uh, in martial arts in, in general, people, uh, I think right now, the, probably the most popular martial art is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. For sure. And people go to the gym to train their martial, that martial art like all yeah. day, every day. <laughs> I, I honestly, I can't think of a, another martial art where hours, just putting hours in, are more valued. Yeah, yeah. Jiu Jitsu uh, is definitely like that's a kung fu. That is their kung fu. Yeah, and it's uh, Brazilian v- via uh, Japan, but so uh, I don't know the Japanese term for kung fu, but it's yeah. Have you taken that to the rest of your life? Yeah, uh, I've at times. At times, I definitely like fall short, uh, but yeah, I've, I try to apply that to my whole life. I try to apply Wing Chun in particular to my whole life um, as much as I can. But obviously, sometimes I, I fall short or forget. Yeah. I need my son to remind me, like, just go train by yourself. Why not? Reminding you of your center line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which was a Wing Chun principle reference for those who do not practice Wing Chun. <laughs> yeah, we're always trying to keep our center line. So, hmm. Man, I had a question. I totally forgot it. Um, well, I have an answer, but I forgot. So, oh, okay. Even. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah, you mentioned in class. I think I was joking with John while we were doing some drill that it's going to be cool in 10 years when all of this just feels automatic. (laughs) And I think I said, it was like, yeah, I'm trying to remember that most of the improvement is going to happen in the first couple of years. Um, And you piped in, it's like, yeah, at that point, it's real. You're just refining the things that you already know. Do you feel like you had challenges starting out and you've kind of changed focus Uh since then? Mm, or is know, it really just um, attacking the whole of Wing Chun with your practice? Both, I guess. Uh, there's definitely things that I'm just like, even just my punch, in general, just like the mechanics of my punch, still just trying to refine that. But uh, I feel confident with my punch. But at the same time, uh, I'm still learning the system um, as I go along. So I'm still a beginner <laughs> in, the, in the whole scheme of things. So I feel like I'm definitely, there's definitely things that I am refining, but there's definitely things that I'm just like still trying to get a basic grasp on. To eat. Like I don't have it in my back pocket yet that yeah. I can just pull it out and utilize it. Uh, what do you feel like, well, your first obstacles were when you were learning the system? Um, I guess <laughs> just uh, form maybe uh, or, or relaxing. A lot of the same stuff, like it's, it's funny, a lot of the same stuff that you see is, is happens to everyone, like relaxing, mm-hmm. um, not trying to be too, not trying to be strong and just letting your strength express itself. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, the, the philo- philosophical stuff that you hear from Bruce Lee is a lot of Wing Chun concepts and ideas like uh, be water. Like that's very Wing Chun-esque. But yeah, just, I guess... The, the, our first form in Wing Chun is called uh, Sunam Tao, or the little idea, and just accepting that it, that's all it is. And you know, when you when I learned my uh, my katas, there was like, oh, this is a block. I'm defending this kind of thing, and I'm mm-hmm. doing this kind of counterattack. Uh, in Wing Chun, uh, the first form is basically just trying to get all these movements plugged into your body. And the concept it's more it, of a menu, exactly. Yeah. So to not have this idea that this movement is to defend this thing and this is to counterattack. That was kind of... Uh, it's, it's really more like you're... Yeah. This is just a shape, man. You're just making yourself yeah. a shape. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, that was hard for me to grasp the concept of when I first... Uh, was, was that something that was a realization for you or did somebody explain that to you explicitly? Well, that was explained to me from day one. Really? But it was still just like, but no, no. No, it has to, there has to be a, and, and honestly, at the end, every <clears throat> single movement in the Sunam Tao has a practical application, mm-hmm. but that's not the point of the form. 
and it's, it's funny you learn something like practical application in Wing Chun, and then you're like, oh, cool. And then I see who like, see, it came exactly out of the form, just like, like, oh, mind blown. <laughs> You've done that in class already a couple of times. Oh, uh, yeah? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I try to emulate my Sifu is in his style, I guess, of teaching. Yeah. I'm doing that too with guitar. Yeah. 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 But I'm finding my Kung Fu with that too. <laughs> yeah. Which is That's, just a, is a, a new way of getting aggravated. <laughs> Can you point out something in, in class? Uh, that's where I like, I don't particularly remember when I like pull hmm. something out. This is from the form. Um, oh yeah, the uh, frontal gum sao, tai sao. Okay. With a uh, two hand guard that Jimmy was throwing up the other day. Oh yeah. 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 That's like in the exact sequence yeah. from Sulim Tao yeah. too. So uh, every, every sing- even setting up the stance itself as practical application. Uh, we don't really get into that as far as the program until later on, mm-hmm. but you can use the stance setting as uh, some chi gurk, which is uh, a chi sao is uh, clinging hands or clinging arms or whatever. And mm-hmm. Chi gurk is uh, clinging leg. legs. Yeah. yeah. How's your Cantonese? Not great. Yeah. Yeah. My mother in law speaks, she's from Hong Kong, so she speaks Cantonese. And uh, I even have students that are <laughs> speak Cantonese, but so kung fu terms are specific to kung fu. The words translate to Cantonese, but the the terms don't really. It's not everyday speak. So if you have a Cantonese speaker, and then if you have my fucked up uh, accent of, I'm not. My tones are Chey Gurk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'll say something. And I'm like, what the hell are you even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know those words and then uh, I'll yeah. sometimes I'll look it up and, and find the characters of, of what I'm trying to say like, oh, oh, oh let's say it this way I'm like, oh, okay uh, yeah. my, my Sifu is Cuban German he's uh, he's pretty good at Cantonese uh, better than most Cuban Germans I would imagine uh, he's definitely in the upper percentile yeah. of Cuban German Cantonese speakers uh, yeah I would be willing to bet some some hefty money on that yeah but I was in China a few years ago and I tried to ask where the bathroom was and my tones were so fucked up that even me, a white tourist with like a stock, where's the bathroom question could yeah. not be understood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Like, uh, there's words that are the exact same words, but they just, they're toned different and they mean completely. Yeah. You have to be really careful when you're yeah. asking a girl for a pen in China. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what could it translate to? Uh, I'll I'll just say to look that up on <laughs> okay on your own time. All right, uh, fair enough. I won't ask any uh, ladies for pens. Yeah, in China, is that uh, Mandarin or Cantonese? Uh, I think that's more Mandarin. Okay, yeah. yeah I was in Shenzhen, so oh, yeah, yeah. I was I was in Canton country, but nobody from Shenzhen is from Shenzhen. Everybody comes from the rest of the okay. rest of the country, so everybody's speaking Mandarin. But all the terms are in uh, Wing Chun terms are in Cantonese. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, all uh, Yip Man lineage is a Cantonese speaker. So maybe I don't know how far back. But uh, a lot of the Chinese people in Columbus are uh, mainlanders. Uh, so right. Yeah. They speak primarily Mandarin. So I'll say Wing Chun, and like, oh, Yong Chong. Like, oh, okay, whatever. You speak if Mandarin. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal to me, actually. Uh, go back to my Sifu one more time. So as he's learning Mandarin, or I'm sorry, not Mandarin, uh, Cantonese, he like the Cantonese speaker would, uh, he would say something, pronounce it, but it'd be off a little bit. And they're like, no, you say it this way. It was like super precise. And his native Cant- like Hong Kong person is correcting him. Like, and then one, one day he said he came to the realization that I had just started learning Cantonese a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. You've been in America for 20-something years, and you still can't pronounce English correctly. So why, <laughs> why are you so hung up on me pronouncing it? But Oh, yeah, I'm a big fan of getting just good enough with a foreign language to barely be understood uh, for exactly that reason. I'm like, if I can understand your your broken English, you'll be able to understand my broken Spanish yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, communication is... Uh, we'll go back to my grandmother now. Uh, my grandmother was that English teacher. She had to have it perfect. But I always had the argument. With, I didn't argue much with my grandmother. Uh, Probably because, a good call. Uh, but my argument would be that 
do you understand what I'm trying to convey to you? Mm -hmm. So then beyond that, what's the point? That is the point of language. Yeah. So <laughs> for some people, it's their Kung Fu. Yeah. People who are really into no. learning languages, yeah. like and learning something so well, they can pull off being a native speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Some people love that. I, I, I don't even don't speak really English that well, so <laughs> that's my native language. You speak it just well enough yeah, exactly. to like get our general points across, yeah. and then yeah, I don't even know if you understand what I'm. Uh, I, I, you're just making sounds with your face, <laughs> exactly. and I'm just responding as politely as I can. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're actually a very good teacher and communicator. Uh, well, yeah, thank was, you. Was a uh, was teaching something that was really difficult starting out for you? No, no, no. I gravitated to that immediately. You just liked geeking out about it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. A hundred percent. I really early on, I, I, I told my Sifu that I wanted to eventually start teaching and he offered me to teach uh, the prep classes uh, twice a week. Wow. So uh, I was teaching the prep classes, which is very important to the success of a school. More so, I realize that more so now than I did back then. But I, even then I like wanted to do my best and like not, fuck up and like I wanted the students that came through me the when they got to my seeing in his class I wanted them to like my seeing to be like oh yeah you did a good job they're already at this point so it's less work for me to do I always wanted that but I gravitated towards teaching like it pretty early on mm -hmm. and uh there was there's a line sometimes like I'm, I'm in a class I'm not teaching the class I'm in the class and sometimes I have to take take my teacher hat off and not be like, oh, yeah, you have to do this. Like, I'm not the instructor of that class. So I definitely gravitated towards teaching immediately. This is what I wanted oh. to so because was, More because you were trying to do right by your Sifu? Or? No, no, I just want... Um, or because you... I wanted to... to I, want every, I wanted everyone to be like, have that feeling how I felt about like... Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, Kung fuck, Fu. yeah fuck yeah, Kung Fu. Yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had an influence for everyone to like, even like if I had a shitty day mm -hmm. and I got to teach, even sometimes more so than taking class, when I got to teach a class, I was like, fuck yeah, Kung Fu. <laughs> it was like, it was, uh, it, it helped me, it helped me a lot get through just like, uh, at the time we, uh, me and my wife, or mo mostly my wife owned a bakery in uh, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So that was also difficult because so I was training a hundred days a week. But we would, uh, being married and owning a business together, uh, we would not always be the friendliest people to each other. That can be difficult, yeah. And just in the stress, uh, I'll give a moment of silence to let the sirens pass. We're actually not in New York right now. There's still sirens. People get mugged and set on fire all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So uh, we own a bakery in, in Brooklyn and we would not be the friendliest to each other at times. And and uh, that was just going to be able to teach a class was just like a release for me. Um, also training was a release, but sometimes just teaching was like all I needed. And I had a class directly after the class that I taught. So I had a class to train. And sometimes I didn't even necessarily want to go train. I wanted to keep teaching, <laughs> but the class I was at, that I was teaching was over. So I went to go train because that's also fun. But yeah, enthusiasm is almost more important than content. Yeah. Really, because the people who practice the most are the people who love it the most. Yeah. But then there also, with that being said, uh, there was times I would be bummed out that I was teaching because I would, I would miss classes and I would like miss some cool new stuff, miss learning this drill. And even if you take the same lesson twice in a row, mm -hmm. I could take a lesson on a particular movement like Ganda, uh, some movement in, in Wing Chun. I can take a lesson on that today or this morning from my Sifu or my Sihing. And A, I could take it again the after, that evening with my Sifu or Sihing, the same person, and it will be a different lesson. More so, I could take a, take a lesson this morning with my Sifu on Ganda and then take a lesson this evening with my seeing a different person and it would be more so a different lesson and yeah, there's, there's different stuff I could pull. There's a lot of depth, almost too much depth to it, Yeah, which is, it kind of teaches you about the importance of focus yeah, and where yeah. your focus is. Yeah, definitely. I would be bummed out sometimes about that, but I really did enjoy teaching that much. I was like, I, I'll miss it. I'll catch, I'll figure it out sometime. 
uh, going back to Capoeira, my my master is old ass dude. He doesn't really teach himself anymore. He has some people. I've been lucky uh, a couple times as far as that goes. He doesn't really teach any of the classes. Every once in a while, he'll poke his head in and say, "Yeah, oh, yeah, everyone's doing this wrong," or whatever. <laughs> uh, he doesn't really speak any English. He's uh, mostly uh, only Portuguese. I don't know if he knows how to speak English and just refuses to, or just never bothered to learn. Either way, uh, but I was at the tail end of him actually instructing classes, so I got a chance to learn directly from him. Same thing with my sifu. Um, I was not the last bit of students, but like towards the tail end of students that he took on besides like just in a regular everyday class. Now, he, like I said, he only teaches instructors or uh, private lessons, mm -hmm. which um, can... It's kind, it's kind of a consequence of his success is how <laughs> yeah. busy that school is. Yeah. 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 So I, I feel lucky in both sense that I got to be their direct students. Not that a direct student of, of Craig. Craig has some really badass. He's a badass himself. Uh, Caillou, another one I see. He runs a, the Queen's location. He he has badass students. He's a badass Kung Fu Wing Chun practitioner himself. My seeing uh, Ethan out in Brooklyn. Uh, and also uh, Barry and uh, my CJ Nicole. She is a beast. She is the baddest of asses she is she's awesome i think i'm not sure if they actually opened it yet but they have a new jersey location somewhere out in new jersey i don't know but wow yeah they're blowing up yeah um uh, how we, big does he see it getting i i don't know i don't have no idea what his yeah. end, end game is um i just know my end game is to uh maybe have just two locations and uh both in columbus no no <laughs> no i probably uh maybe three locations Probably one in Florida, uh, one in Columbus, and maybe one in like somewhere else in Ohio. Mm. That's my down the road game. I'm not big, big fan of Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I can go and train or, uh, at that location when I'm home for holidays and stuff. Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. Get get you trained up, and you help open that. There we go. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, that's give me five years to not suck. All right, that's yeah. what we'll do. It's my five year plan anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, back to your question. I immediately took to teaching. I wanted to do that right away. Right on. I figured that out real quick. Yeah, you were you were doing a couple of other things before finding martial arts and teaching and oh yeah movement things like. So you were running that bakery in Brooklyn with your wife. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned that for a little while you were graphic designer. Yeah, or uh, that's what I. Uh, I started to go to school for, uh, I actually dropped out of school because my cousin was working at a graphic firm and he was like, just come work here. So I did that for a couple of years and it was like, uh, it's awful. I was, a, I wasn't currently still I'm a bartender. I was a bicycle courier, mm -hmm. uh, in New York city, um, uh, did a bunch of odds and ends jobs. And I was, uh, one of my favorite jobs actually is I, I was this guy's personal assistant. It was awesome job. It was an easy job. He wasn't like some dude that was like, oh, pick up my dry cleaner at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, he would call me if he actually needed me and he would be working alongside with me. So it was like, he would just have me do stupid errands for no reason. But, um, and he was, I was early mid twenties. Mm -hmm. He was paying me uh, $10 an hour for 23 hours a day, regardless of if I worked at all that day or. Oh, dope. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's actually a decent, yeah. damn decent living. Yeah, so well, uh, a little bit less decent in New York City, but yeah, still decent. Yeah. I think with the the price of living in New York City, it's like two hundred thirty pesos a day, something. <laughs> yeah, something like that, something like that. Yeah, but still, I mean, uh, he would just give me cash. So I would not have to worry about. Right on. Don't uh, send this to the government. <laughs> I only worked that for one day. Uh, IRS. <laughs> <laughs> So I made two hundred thirty dollars with that guy. Two hundred thirty pesos. Yes, two hundred thirty pesos. Mm. Yes, um, yeah. Well, we're coming up on. I th oh yeah. Yeah. Keep going if you have more stuff. Or I think we should probably start breaking down. Okay. So um, yeah, before we sign off, do you have anything you want to leave people with? If you're in the greater Columbus area, the Central Ohio area, you can check me out on Instagram at Columbus Kung Fu. 
Facebook, I think it's the same handle, or my website, WLAstudios.com. That's uh, in Western Lotus West, Athletics. Yeah, Western Lotus Athletics. Quick on that, my uh, name is Jose, and uh, the characters for Jose are Lotus West. So Ah, uh, uh, that's where it came from. Yep. Okay. I thought you were just saying some Eastern things. No, I mean. Then putting athletics It, it kind of played into that. Yeah. But, yeah, that's Lotus West is the characters for Jose. Very cool. So that's where that came from. Dope. All right. Well, this was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it was. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks uh, for sitting down. Do we have a sponsor? I mean, I, I wouldn't say no. Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye. Good night. Hey, I'm still here. Thanks for listening. And if you love the show, please go onto iTunes and leave a review. It helps much more than just leaving a rating. It's a way that you can directly help the show. And that's going to help us keep getting good guests and putting out good content for all of y'all. So if you love us as much as we love you, please go ahead and just say one nice thing about us. It's an absolute pleasure for me to be able to sit down with these people and talk about excellence and pursuing excellence. And I love that I can provide it for anybody who's interested. So if you'd like to hear more, this is a very simple way that you can help support the show. Anyway, thanks again. Appreciate you. Take care of yourselves. Bye.